Hi, it was Mr. Lim here again, and this is our video about the production of sulfuric acid, also known as the contact process. All right, so we're going to be learning about that, and remember, it's links to previous chemistry topics. Okay, so um, it's called the contact process. It's a multi-step process, and these are the steps. Okay, right. So it's a four-step process. Please remember how the, you can get the number of moles of uh, one reactant and go all the way to the end. Um, this one's fairly easy because there aren't too many coefficients, but you know, just make sure that you can do it. All right. So step one, the molten sulfur is burnt in air. So what they do is that they have the molten sulfur and they spray it into a high-pressure dried air and it will react with the oxygen only. Okay. The sulfur combust turns into sulfur dioxide. All right. It's not an equilibrium reaction, so it does not need yield considerations, just rate. Okay, so these things are going to have enough energy to uh, turn into sulfur dioxide, and it's not going to turn back into molten sulfur and dry and air. Okay, so how do I increase the rate? Well, you have a spray with a high surface area, so you put it into little tiny droplets, which increases the frequency of successful collisions. Um, the high pressure increases the frequency of successful collisions of that dried air. And the high temperature increases the frequency of successful collisions as well because a uh, greater proportion have sufficient energy. All right. It is a highly exothermic process. So for all intents and purposes, um, the sulfur dioxide that comes out comes out too hot. And so what happens is that they have to cool it down. So to cool it down, they run it through whatever cooling tower or something. And that uh, can be used to heat up other stuff. Okay, that energy can be used to heat up other stuff. All right. So... Um, sulfur dioxide is then burnt in more air. So the, uh, the sulfur di dioxide, after being cooled a bit, comes back into another reaction chamber with some more air, and you make more sulfur trioxide this time. Okay, so you again mix it with some dried air, combust turns into sulfur trioxide. Okay, so it's an exothermic forward reaction, and so the equilibrium needs to uh, consider rate and yield. Okay, so it is a equilibrium reaction. Okay, so the SO2 can turn back into, sorry, the SO3 can turn back into SO2 and O2. So consider rate and yield. What rate considerations do we have? We have a high pressure to increase the frequency of success, uh, successful collisions. We have a high temperature, and we have a catalyst. Okay, and so you can see the catalyst beds are there, right? Catalysts are in little tiny pebble forms to have a high surface area to increase the exposure. Okay, and then we have yield uh, considerations. Because it's an exothermic reaction, a high temperature lowers yield, so you want a lowish temperature. High pressure increases the yield, so you want a high pressure. Okay, however, when we compromise, when they actually do it, the temperature is kept at about 400 to 500 degrees Celsius because uh, a high temperature will have a high rate but a low yield. So you uh, keep on testing it at different conditions until you find which one produces a nice rate and a nice yield of 400, uh, and that turns out to be 400 to 500 degrees Celsius. The pressure is kept low because it's too expensive to increase the pressure for not that much increase in yield, okay? Because this is effectively a continuous reaction, okay? So because it's a continuous reaction, and we'll get to how they get the sulfur dioxide back in a moment, um, they can take the unreacted sulfur dioxide and put it back in there. So they have to, uh, so worrying about the pressure uh, and trying to increase it is not really that much of a benefit, okay? Because they kind of make enough as it is at atmospheric pressure. And to make all of this um, uh, high pressure would not be uh, uh, viable, okay? Because the reaction is highly exothermic, too high a temperature can create danger conditions. So in other words, you could blow up or you could melt stuff and then everything escapes and then everyone dies and everyone's bad. Okay, so you do not want it to get too hot. So if you were to run this through lots of catalysts, so instead of it just being in catalyst beds, you had catalysts all the way through here, it would get way too hot. Okay, so if it's to stop that from happening, what happens is that the gas mixture is continuously passed through catalyst beds and then cooled to ensure that it doesn't get too hot. So here comes the sulfur dioxide, here comes the air. They mix together here at this catalyst bed and they come out way too hot, okay? So instead of going straight next to the next catalyst bed and getting even hotter, what they do is that they cool it down here. So they cool down and then they go back out to here, right? And then they can go back into here and then they get way too hot again. Once it's way too hot, they come out, cool down, go back and then react again. Okay, and so the idea is that you keep it at the right temperature without uh, melting everything, and all that excess energy can be used to do stuff like, you know, stuff. 
Um, excess energy can be used to power the plant or preheat materials, stuff like that. After multiple cycles through the catalyst beds, the mixture is predominantly sulfur trioxide. Okay, so mostly sulfur trioxide, a little bit of sulfur dioxide, probably not much air. Okay, so this sulfur trioxide is then pumped into an absorption tower. So this is step three, absorption. The sulfur trioxide reacts with sulfuric acid to form oleum. What's this oleum? It's H2S2O7. Okay, it was on the first slide, and hopefully you copied it down. Right, so uh, the sulfur trioxide reacts with sulfuric acid to form oleum. Okay, so what happens is that the sulfur trioxide can react with, you could just put sulfur trioxide with water and it would form sulfuric acid. But it, that reaction in particular is very, very, very exothermic. And so what happens is that as soon as you put the sulfur trioxide into water, the water starts to boil. When the water starts to boil, it turns into a mist of sulfuric acid, which is, you know, bad. So therefore, uh, you don't even bother doing it with that. Um, that's a green chemistry principle. Again, making sure your processes are safe. So producing oleum first is a safer process. So what you do is you take some sulfuric acid that you prepared before, uh, drop it in this way. Sulfur trioxide comes in that way. They meet and they form oleum, which is kind of a liquid and then the liquid the liquid can be removed from that tower okay because only the sulfur trioxide reacts with the water uh, sorry the sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide does not the sulfur dioxide stays in gaseous form and the sulfur trioxide gets absorbed into the liquid so the sulfur dioxide is a gas and therefore it can be uh, collected at the top and put back into the uh, last reaction chamber okay sulfur trioxide bubbled through forms oleum unreacted sulfur dioxide um, is returned to step two. Not an equilibrium reaction again, so only rate, considers, uh, rate considerations required. What rate considerations? High temperature increases rate of reaction, but the reaction is exothermic, so it will heat itself. So effectively, this is not a, a um, important step in trying to get the maximize the yield. You're not going to lose much stuff here. All right. High concentration of sulfuric acid will ensure all the sulfur trioxide is absorbed and turned into oleum. OK, but you do have to control how much concentrated sulfuric acid you put in. You put too much sulfuric acid in and what you'll end up is that you won't get oleum. You'll get an oleum sulfuric acid mix. And then like, you know, that's bad. But the whole point is that you want to try and get mostly oleum. So you like again, if you constantly monitor the amount that's going in in both sides and the quality of the oleum that's coming out um, you can make sure that you're putting in the right amounts and therefore you're not wasting anything okay um, finally uh, you mix the oleum with water uh, and it produces sulfuric acid and it produces uh, double the amount of sulfuric acid than what you consumed in that last step so you in the last step we use sulfuric acid in the absorption tower when you uh, react this oleum with water, you produce double that amount that you put in, hopefully. All right, so you may end up making um, twice as much sulfuric acid as in step three. Okay, uh, you still end up making concentrated sulfuric acid, which is 98% pure, which means that there's almost no water there. Okay, and what you've got to recognize is that if there's no water, the H2SO4 cannot hydrolyze and if it can't hydrolyze, it stays as a H2SO4 molecule, okay? So instead of it being an aqueous and splitting up into hydrogen ions and HSO4 minus ions, if there's not enough water, there's just no H3O plus ions, and therefore it doesn't really act like an acid, okay? And so what happens is that this concentrated sulfuric acid is actually much safer to transfer than normal sulfuric acid, okay? Because normal sulfuric acid, um, at reasonably high concentrations like 6 to 12 to 20 molar will have lots of H plus ions. Whereas concentrated sulfuric acid, where there's so little water that there's no H plus ions, isn't really that acidic. Okay, and so therefore it's much safer to transfer than normal sulfuric acid. Okay, so I'm adding this last slide in there just to go through all of the ideas for um, the production of sulfuric acid and how they link to older topics. Okay, so using green chemistry principles, heat from exothermic reactions, uh, making sure that you use them to power stuff. Don't release chemicals into the atmosphere like SO2 and SO3 because they're, uh, they will form acid rain. Um, use of catalysts to in increase the rate of reaction. All right, use of oleum to make the process safer. Use of concentration, uh, concentrated sulfuric acid to make the transport safer. Um, equilibrium concepts at step two remember one three and four are not really equilibrium steps acids bases show that sulfuric acid is a 
acid and even sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide are acidic. But wait a minute, how do you make an acid from sulfur dioxide or sulfur trioxide? How can that form H3O plus? Okay, so the idea is that you're going to need two water molecules. One of the water molecules will accept a hydrogen from the other water molecule and turn into H3O plus, and then the other one will give the hydrogen to uh, the, um, the SO3, and it will turn into SO3, HSO4 minus. Okay, so effectively, one of them splits into a H plus and an OH minus. Okay, that H plus goes to that H. Uh, 2O, the other H2O to make it H3O plus, and the OH goes to this to make it an HSO4 minus. Okay, so, and then that would be the same for sulfur dioxide, except you'd make HSO3 minus. Okay, so that's the production of sulfuric acid. Hopefully that was um, clear and you can see all the cool stuff that, with that. Right, and then the next one will be biodiesel. Adios.